What's up, Ram fans, and welcome back from the break and to the JT Double Take. Today we have Jason Ortiz filling for Tara, so thanks, Jason, for joining me today. Of course. Absolutely, Jessica. I, I honestly feel like we should call this the Double J Double Take. Eh? Mm. Yeah. All right, all right. Anyways, <laughs> the CSU women's basketball team had a rough trip up to Wyoming, so Jessica, why don't you break that down for us? The Colorado State women's basketball team added their fifth straight loss on Saturday as the team headed to Laramie, Wyoming to take on the Wyoming Cowgirls for the second time this season. Although it was a new game, the results were nearly the same. The Cowgirls started off on an 8-0 run, but the Rams never let up in the first half. It was the second half where CSU really struggled. The woman only tallied one point in the first nine minutes after halftime. Sophomore center Leah Davis carried the Rams with a career-high 21 points and six rebounds but the team as a whole was only shooting 28.3% from the field. The Cowgirls were led by junior forward Bailey Cotton, who scored 17 total points and added to the Cowgirls field goal percentage of 42%, almost shooting double the percentage of the Rams. Ultimately, the Rams could not find ways to score throughout the rest of the game, resulting in a 56-32 loss for the Rams. CSU is now 2-12 in conference play and 8-17 on the season, while Wyoming advances to their ninth straight win. Despite the CSU women's basketball team's loss, this past weekend, the Colorado State softball team headed west to the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic in California. The Rams started off hot on day one as they knocked off Bethune-Cookman 7-0 behind the arm of Bridget Hutton and then took down Uni the University of Utah 6-1 where Ashley Ruiz started off the game with a three-run home run and never looked back. On day two, the Rams started off the day facing then-ranked number 16 Oklahoma State. CSU got the scoring going early in the first inning when Karina Gamboa singled into center field, scoring Danny Klein. The defense was on fire behind the arm of Jessica Jarecki, who only gave up six hits and struck out seven in her complete game finish. The only blemish that Jarecki had was a solo home run in the top of the sixth when Samantha Show homered to center field, tying the game at one. The Rams bounced back in the bottom of the sixth when Haley Donaldson singled in the left, scoring Danny Klein again. CSU finished off the upset, blanking the Cowgirls in the seventh and winning the game 2-1. Riding high off that win, they looked to take it into their next game against Cal Poly. The Rams unfortunately fell to 2-1 to one and headed into day three against their, waiting, their biggest opponent waiting ahead. The final game this of the weekend was against number two ranked UCLA. Bridget Hutton took the mound against two freshmen, Megan Fermo, and Fermo did not disappoint. She went seven innings and allowed zero runs on zero hits, walked none, and struck out nine rams while doing so. The UCLA had two defensive errors during the game, or else Fermo would have had thrown her first collegiate perfect game. The Rams held the Bruins to only one unearned run through four innings before they put up two more runs in the fifth inning on a couple more errors. The game went final at 3-0, to zero, and the Rams finished the weekend 3-2 and two, and looked to keep a good start rolling into part one of the Colorado Classic, where they will play six games starting Thursday at one in the afternoon. With another weekend in the books for the softball team, the CSU football team kicked off their seventh practice, practice of the spring season today. The team was able to head outside and run some drills as they are preparing for their spring game, which will take place in two weeks. And as the Rams are looking for new veteran leaders to carry the team, former CSU running back Izzy Matthews made an appearance at the practice today. The biggest question of this offseason is, who will fill the role as the next outstanding wide receiver? Last year's performance from Preston Williams and Ola B.C. Johnson added to another year in successful wide receivers for CSU. Without Alvis Witted, the former wide receivers coach, the success of CSU's receivers is up to question. Despite being on the look for a new wide receivers coach, today junior wide receiver Warren Jackson was a good target as he was making pretty good catches today during practice. We will have to see how the team develops uh, for the rest of this offseason. This past weekend, the women's tennis team was in Lincoln, Nebraska for a dual match weekend. They started off the weekend against the University of Nebraska. Doubles teams for CSU didn't fare too well against the Huskers as they all fell in their matches. However, singles were a different story. Emily Luschweger dropped her first set 6-3, but rallied in the second set to win 6-5, forcing a third set, where she ended up winning 10-5. The final winner for the Rams came in at the number four singles, Nancy Gonham. Dropped set one, six to four, but came back in the second set to win six to one, forcing another third set for CSU. Ghanem ended up winning that set 10 to eight. CSU fell to Nebraska three to four. And on day two, CSU swept the board facing North Dakota. The Rams all came to play that day and ended up winning seven to zero. Head coach Jared Camarada was impressed with his team. Team's play after the match, he added, 
We did a good job of taking care of business. We kept our energy the whole match. Now it's time for us to get some rest and prepare for our home opener against Drake next weekend. All right, Jason, it's time for this week's Disrupted Picks. So Tara and I typ typically send out a tweet for ideas on what people want to hear us talk about. But Jason, it sounds like you got so some submissions today. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we got them in the hat. So Excited. if you want to do Excited. that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> See what we got here today. All right. So this is, comes from uh, Stan underscore Jake. It says, where do you think Bryce Harper will end up? That's, that's actually a really good question. That is a good question. So with spring ball already starting up, it sounds like he's going to mm -hmm. have his decision made by the end of the week. Yeah. Um, and at this point, it really sounds like it's still very up in the air yeah. um, between the Dodgers, the Phillies. And I've heard a little bit about the Giants here and there. I'm not sure if that's legitimate or not. So yeah. Jason, what do you think? So I think it, it's really going to happen now because of the Nolan Arenado trade, mm -hmm. or not trade, uh, extension. Yeah. Um, so you had the Manny Machado $300 million contract. Now you got the Arenado contract where he's basically getting $26 million a year, highest paid position player. Um, so that, that means Bryce Harper is going to get his money. And mm -hmm. I think, personally, I think he, he'll end up with the Dodgers because they're a team that's going to want to win right now and they have the pieces to do it. And he's just another piece that will get them there. Yeah, so the Phillies' most recent offer, um, or in their final offer, mm -hmm. I believe, is a $300 million offer. These are some huge contracts going on here. Um, I, it's hard for me to say that he won't take that, but I ha can't help but agree with you. I think LA is a very good place to be for him. I think he would love being there for a lot of reasons. Um, but overall, I think if he wants to have a successful rest of his baseball career, he's still very young, but if mm -hmm. he wants to have success and be with a successful team, I think the Dodgers is the right place to be. Um, I could just get that feeling that he doesn't really want to be with the Phillies. Yeah, I feel like he, he kind of has that win-now mentality, and mm -hmm. that's what the Dodgers are about. They've been to the last two World Series. They're missing those few key pieces. He's one of them, and if you go to the Phillies, you're probably going to re be rebuilding for three or four years yeah. before you get those pieces that will get you to the World Series. They haven't made the playoffs in like four or five years. So Yeah, absolutely. Where, I mean, the Dodgers have made the playoffs the last seven years, so yeah. I, think, I think that might be a good place for him to land. Yeah, so, we're, so it sounds like we're waiting for the Dodgers to make an official mm -hmm. offer. Um, a lot of people are expecting it might be a little bit less than the Phillies, $300 million. Yeah. So um, an interesting question for you to add to that is, how much of a pay cut do you think he would take when you're already making that much money, yeah. $300 million? Yeah. If they were to offer him $40 million less, $50 million less, um, is that worth it? Do you think? Yeah, yeah. So I think personally that these guys are making so much money as it is, whether it be from their contracts, but they're also making endorsement yeah. like stuff. Yep. So if he takes a pay cut a little bit, he I, I feel like the Dodgers would offer him probably about two hundred and fifty million. They wouldn't give him the ten years that he wants because they're not an organization that usually wants to give long term contracts. But yeah. I think personally I think that if you take a little bit less you'll for winning, yeah. So about two hundred fifty million dollar contract is what Jason's thinking. I have to agree. I think that could be pretty close. But Jason, thank you so much for joining me on today's uh, show. But Ram fans, that is all we have for you for this week. To stay tuned on sports throughout the week, you can head to thecollegian.com or follow us on Twitter at sports underscore ctv. But don't go anywhere because up next is Jason Rios because he has all your updates from the Oscars. Stay tuned. <laughs>